hi, Nikki, you're the lead ACP, and Dr. Pooja Sharma, you're the clinical director yeah. for respiratory. Um, you both uh, set up the acute respiratory team known locally as the ARM team. Can you tell us a bit about why we set it up and then what it actually does? Yeah, so actually, yeah, the, the art team came about actually with COVID arrival. So there wasn't any art team before that. So there were pretty sort of, what should we say, very um, enthusiastic people who pitched themselves in to, to help with COVID. And, and that actually then led to a kind of accumulation or uh, of um, the, the, the most enthusiastic and flexible people you know, that you could get. And um, they just wanted to help. And that, that is the biggest quality uh, with the flexibility. So it started with uh, helping patients with CPAP, which is the, is the unit that we established is solely for COVID. And they started to um, go around the whole hospital and getting the patients started on CPAP or an IV and helping other wards to support that. And that's how they kind of congregated. And it was a 24 seven service actually at that time. And they covered and they, so Nikki was actually a physio by background and she pitched in for that kind of a help, supporting the whole uh, set of patients and everyone. And, and that's how it came about, a self-selected group of committed and flexible people. And that then we thought that actually this was putting in, they educated the whole uh, 500, approximately 500 people, uh, nurses, doctors included, to how to put CPAP on patients at that time with COVID. So that's how it, it, it all came about. And then we thought that actually we couldn't survive without this team. This was delivering so much. So we continued on and we made it official with some key workers and one of which was um, uh, Nikki was the lead nurse at the time. So uh, looking at that, uh, actually then we looked at COVID early discharge and all. So I'd, I'd like you to take over okay. Nikki, but they did a lot of well, work. The, the great thing about this whole service was that it was a multidisciplinary approach. So it was whether it was nurses or physios, we all had this common good about working together for the good of the whole hospital. And I think that, that ethos is still carrying forward. Um, when I look at COVID, COVID just didn't go away on its own. We then had the challenges of people staying in hospital with COVID, but being well enough to be discharged. And that's when we developed the COVID at home oxygen service. So this was a service that the, we joined with the oxygen service and we sent the patients home early, but we supported them with um, some equipment, a pulse oximeter and um, gave them follow up phone calls. The phone calls then became obviously further apart as the patients felt more confident and, and obviously not worried that they were coming back. And I have to say that none of the patients came back, so they were all safely discharged and safely safety netted in their own environment, which is obviously really important. And that was great, wasn't it? Because that really was our first setup of the patient initiated follow up as well, yeah. wasn't it? Because yeah. you gave cards to patients to say, phone should you want to um, have some advice. Um, yeah. And since then, the art team has grown, hasn't mm -hmm. it? So tell yeah. us more about yeah. the really good work that you're doing now. So initially we do quite a lot with um, completing the COPD and audit pay, uh, national paperwork. So we're seeing all those patients that are coming in with, with those conditions. Uh, when I look through the book, over 1,800 patients we see a year. So these are patients that have a respiratory review, an expert respiratory review, um, and are managed, whether they're managed at front door, whether they're managed on a respiratory ward, or even outlying wards, these patients have, have this, this purposeful review. Um, we're supported very ably by our medical colleagues. And I think that's the essence of it. We're, we, we are always feeling like we have this, this expertise behind us. So we can't do it alone. We can't do it without, without our medical colleagues. And that's an enormous amount of patients that you're seeing each year. Yeah. Um, and you're forever expanding. So you're now doing something with home nebulizers. We are. So a local charity have given, have donated 12 nebulizer units. And this, we, we got together, we've created a PDSA, 
and actually we, it means that we can discharge the patients earlier as long as they're well enough with nebulizers at home um, and this has enabled them to have cut two or three days off their length of stay. And, and that's, that's great work, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and how do you follow those patients up? Again, using the telephone uh, communication. Um, and patients like to have a number. They know that if they phone this number, they, will, they know who they're getting. It's not a, a call centre from somewhere in, anywhere else in the world. It's people they've met, people they know. And if we don't know, we always refer to our medical colleagues and get support from them as well. And that's some great work, isn't it? And I know um, we're looking further as well as monitoring at home with the use of Docabo. Um, and that's in its early stages, isn't it, at the moment? It is. Initially, that started off as us looking at our frequent flyers, so our respiratory patients that come in quite regularly, and saying, well, why are they coming in? Can we do something, a little small change, that will enable them to not have to keep coming back in? Is it which system is failing them? Which bits can we actually support them with? And I think what you're doing quite differently there is often patients get discharged and then put on Docabo. The way you're looking at doing it is really that admission prevention, mm -hmm. isn't it? That admission avoidance because you're preempting them coming in. So mm -hmm. you've looked at that list of 10, haven't you, that, that, that you've picked of top 10 attenders for respiratory yeah. and proactively you're choosing to mm -hmm. place them on Docabo. Um, and, and perhaps it's probably worth saying, what does Docabo do? <laughs> so Docabo is a virtual <laughs> monitoring system. So the patient records with the equipment that they're given or their observations, so their blood pressure, their heart rate, their pulse. And actually there's some subjective um, elements, aren't there, to that? Yeah. How are you feeling? How breathless yeah. are you? What's your cough like today? Um, so we're capturing both the very objective and the subjective aspects of it. I think also just going back to your question about, or your um, conversation about when they're in hospital, then you can onboard them properly. The patient has time to think about, do I want to really be involved with this? What does it involve? Will my family understand? Will they accept? You know, it's very much, we're very open about this. And there are some patients it's not appropriate for. And we've learned that through through the conversations we've had. So yes, it does suit a certain cohort, and and hence the telephonic follow up. Yeah, because they like that human touch, isn't it? The human, uh, you know, at the end of the telephone and voice, mm -hmm. and and especially from people who've already seen them, known them, and so it, it's that contact and touch helps. And also, mm -hmm. I just wanted to pitch in that although we talk about always right time right place right team but what they are helping us to deliver is even if the patient with minus 99 beds with best will in the world you can't get the patient to the right place in the right time so what this team is helping us to deliver is still the right care to anywhere and everywhere the patient is so they go to any to deliver that care, help discharging from there itself, mm -hmm. or if it is acute medicine, ambulatory care, they help to discharge patients from there itself, but having had the right input with the right speciality. So, you know, it, we've always talked about all these things about right place, and, but it's not always possible. So even in that kind of environment, the and patient is still getting right care. And, and I think that's great, isn't it? Because <clears throat> those, um, shall I say, internal referrals, yeah. if ever there's an internal referral for respiratory, say on a surgical ward or on the cardiology ward, on the frailty ward, it's the art team that go out there, yeah. isn't it, and undertake that. Yeah. Um, what sort of things um, does that encounter? Because you are really giving discharge advice, aren't you, for that respiratory issue that, um, that they've asked mm -hmm. you to input in? I guess it's also looking at what happens in their normal their everyday life. Are there inhalers? Are they taking them properly? Because if they're not taking them properly, then we're on a, the back foot in terms of managing their condition. Looking at their self-management. What, what is it that makes them tick? What makes them manage it or not manage it? The, the access to pulmonary rehab, and I've done pulmonary rehab classes, so it's again, you can promote the exercise, which is, which is part of the nice guidance and the best guidance for these patients. Smoking cessation, yeah, prevention, yeah. prevention so, of disease, you know, prevention is high on our list in NHS now, and you've done the elaborate work. Yeah, so in, we're just promoting our uh, smoking cessation service 
and that's just gone into having people being employed into a position. So again, it's pulling in all those professionals and that big holistic picture about how we best manage the patient. And I think although there's a digital move, mm. there's still that importance to have the balance between a face-to-face -face, or knowing your clinician and, and the digital technology. That's great. Um, thank you so much for all you thank do. You. I think the art service is a fantastic service. Yeah. Um, and I know you've got great plans to, uh, to develop more. So thank yeah. you for all that you do. Um, you are an amazing team. So thanks. <laughs>